Hello and welcome again to the Simple Bible Study Podcast, picking up again in the 20th chapter of the book of St. Matthew as we go through the whole word of God in as simple and as basic a way and as short a way as possible. We're trying to keep these uh, podcasts within a short amount of time so that you can get the most out of God's word each time and I hope it's a blessing to you. Thank you so much for listening. We're going to open up in a quick word of prayer and then we're going to we're going to continue in the book of Matthew at the 20th chapter and at the 17th verse. And so Father, first of all, thank you so much for another day and another opportunity to to Uh, share your word with anybody willing to listen, God. We know there's power in your word. We know there's uh, there's deliverance and there is just blessing in anything that you have ever said to us. And so we pray, God, that somebody will find this, that will be blessed by it and will grow in it. And we pray it, of course, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so picking up at this um, 17th verse of the 20th chapter of Matthew, um, you know, here we have once again our Lord. Uh, he, he's on the way to Jerusalem, and it's important that we see that what's going on here is almost like a parade. Um, he, he's there's like a parade of followers all around him. There's excitement in the crowd uh, as you you know as you read this and, and you read it in the other gospels as well. You find different ones coming up to him, asking for prayer, asking for this, asking for that. There's a crowd thronging around him as he makes this final trip to Jerusalem. People have heard about him feeding five thousand. They've heard about him healing, and they're following him uh, physically. And verse seventeen says, "And Jesus going up to Jerusalem took the twelve disciples apart in the way." And he the, he said unto them, so he's gonna pull the pull the twelve apart from the rest of the uh, of the crowd. And so you know this crowd is following him. I'm sure many of them are thinking that when he gets to Jerusalem, man, he's gonna make a political impact, right? <laughs> they think he's gonna confront the Romans or King Herod, uh, and and that's the problem with us. We all think too small, just like them. Uh, taking out the Romans or confronting Herod would have had some positive effect, I guess. But but our Lord has something greater in mind, greater than they could ever ask or even think of. He's not going to confront some little temporary king or some little political system. He's going to confront death. And he's going to confront death on behalf of them. And he's going to confront death on behalf of you and me. <laughs> and by the way, spoiler alert, he's going to defeat death. And also, by the way, if you are upset or disappointed that the Lord isn't doing what you think he should, pay close attention to this because he's probably doing something better than what you think he should. (laughs) And so on the way to this this grand victory he's going to have, he pulls the 12 apart. And, and, And a note there, some things only the true followers of Christ can handle. And so he pulls the 12 away from all of these outside stragglers and all these ones who are following him for the fish and the loaves. He pulls the real followers aside and he gives them this little uh, tidbit of information. He says, behold, at verse 18, we go up to Jerusalem and the son of man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. Did you hear what he said? He's going to be betrayed, condemned to death, delivered to the Gentiles, mocked, scourged, and crucified. (laughs) That's a lot. That's a lot that's going to happen to him. I mean, let's look at these. He says betrayed. He, he's, he's, he's going to be turned on. There, there are few things worse in life than betrayal. To have somebody you trust or love even turn against you. That, I mean, that's devastating. Uh, but, but here's where it's at another level, because not only is our Lord betrayed, 
he's betrayed and he knows that the person is going to do it. <laughs> he has to sit with him and care for him and encourage him, knowing exactly what he'll do. Oh, our Lord is something. And then he said he will be delivered to the Gentiles. Again, he knows what they're going to do. First, his friends turn against him. Now the whole world, the Gentiles, will be out to get him. He, he, he's going to be put in shackles. Uh, the Lord of the Lord of glory is going to be placed in shackles. He's going to be mocked, made fun of, made into a, a sport for their entertainment. He's going to be scourged. That's beaten. His humiliation is both physical and psychological. The physical, that's the scourging, the psychological, the betrayal and the mocking. He, then he's going to be crucified. He's going to be killed, friends. <laughs> crucified talks of how he's going to die. It, it won't be quick or painless. We get the word excruciating from the term crucified. And that word excruciating means out of the cross. It means he's going to suffer. <laughs> he's not going to have a quick death. He's going to suffer and die. And the worst part of it is, at least from my perspective, he knows it's coming. Well, if I knew this was coming for me, I'd run in the opposite direction. <laughs> I'd be headed not to Jerusalem. I'd be headed uh, uh, down to uh, uh, Tahiti or somewhere. I would not <laughs> be going anywhere near Jerusalem. But our Lord is doing all he can to get to Jerusalem. Isn't that something? And the question would then be, for anybody new to this, <laughs> or maybe you need a reminder, the question is, why would he do it? Why would he go towards scourging? Why would he go towards mocking? Why would he go towards betrayal? Why would he go towards uh, being handed over to the Gentiles? And why would he go towards betrayal and crucifixion? Why? <laughs> why would he do this? Well, at the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, and the second verse, and I'm going to turn there really quickly. The book of Hebrews 12 and uh, chapter 12, verse 2 says this. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Listen to this. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and sat down at the at the right hand of the throne of God. <laughs> He, 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 he went through it for the joy that was set before him. Joy? Well, what's the joy? Well, he knew that there would be a man from Watts, California, who would need to be saved and then call himself the Bible guy and start a podcast, you see. He knew there'd be a woman with no mother and no father uh, that would need him. He, he knew all of you listening to me would need a savior. And that's his joy set before him. You and me having eternal life, being with him, him returning to the Father, him going back to heaven, but knowing that he was going to prepare a place so that you and I could come and be with him. That was his joy. The book of Acts, the book of Acts uh, uh, at chapter one, we'll turn there. Book of, book, the book of Acts really quickly, chapter one, verse... Uh, Book of Acts chapter 1, there it is, verse 3, Acts 1 and 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. It's called his passion. He was passionate about dying for you and dying for me. How can you not Love Jesus. <laughs> and so he endured the shame. He endured the betrayal. He endured the scourging. He endured the mocking. He endured the crucifying for you and for me to be connected back to God so that our sins would be paid for. Now, somebody will then say, well, he could handle the scourging. He could handle the mocking. He could handle the, uh, the, the crucifixion because after all, he was God, as you Bible guy have taught in many of these lessons. And that's no problem for him, you see. Well, that's just wrong. <laughs> I mean, he could endure it, but not because he was God. You see, Jesus is not just, he's not just God with a man mask on, you see, pretending to be a man. He's God taking on flesh, or rather, he's fully God, but also he's he becomes fully man. He takes on 
fully man's nature. And the Bible says that when he came here, he, 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 he literally became of no reputation. Let's read that in Philippians, the second chapter and the, uh, the seventh verse. Uh, I'm sorry, they'll start at the sixth verse. Uh, let's start at the fifth verse. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, the forme means the, that in, in the Greek it's the morphe. In other words, he was, he, he, he was um, possessing the nature of God. That's what that means, the morphe, the form of God. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but listen, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Uh, and we'll stop there. Uh, well, we can read verse eight. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Uh, oh, we read that. Verse nine, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. And this is one of my favorite verses, that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. But you want to go back to that seventh verse where it says he made himself of no reputation. That in the original language, I'm told by people who study such things, <laughs> tells the, uh, it means he emptied himself, literally. It, 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 it is an emptying. He, he, he basically uh, uh, emptied himself of his rights as God, his 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 deity, he 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 was in the uh, of morphe, the form of a servant, meaning he was fully serve. Uh, uh, he was fully a man, friends, and so being a fully man, he hurt <laughs> and he suffered, and he suffered physically, and he suffered emotionally, and being uh, uh, left alone, and friends betraying him and mocking him. Uh, but Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our, or the responsibility of our peace was upon him, but by his stripes, ye are healed. Healed? Yes, friends, the division between you and God is healed. <laughs> the sin that was leading us to hell has been healed uh, by our Savior, who for the joy set before him, that is, having us with him, endured the cross. Aren't you glad he did it? <laughs> Aren't you glad you know him as Savior today? If you don't know him, you ought to, <laughs> because you won't find anybody in this world willing to do for you what he did. We'll cut it off there and pick up again next time. Until then, hey, thank you so much for joining us on this Simple Bible Study Podcast. God bless you.